Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio and today I'm sharing with you my Pick a Stick Challenge Mixed Media Art Journal page for the month of August 2019. And the Pick a Stick Challenge is a Facebook art community group over on Facebook. If you'd like to ask to join, the link is in the description box below. Please answer the questions when prompted if you would like to join, otherwise we won't accept you. So, the first prompt for this month, and remember these are one word prompts that are randomly drawn on sticks. So you get what you get, you don't pitch a fit. That's just what it is. <laughs> and uh, the first one was fish. And I had these new stencils from Stencil Girl. Um, they had a sale going on a couple months ago and I purchased a big stack of stencils because, hey, it was a good sale. <laughs> so I think it was summer solstice sale or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, I picked up these little fish. Um, they are stencils and masks. So you saw me at the beginning there and I left that part in trimming them out to make them into masks. So you've got the stencil portion, which is the outline with a hole in it, you know, and then you have these little mask portions, which can be separated from the stencil. You don't have to, you could leave them in and they would be fine. Or you can separate them out like this and make them into little mask guys, which I wanted to play with on my gel plate. Now the colors for this month's challenge that were randomly drawn are yellow and green gold. Green gold is kind of an olive tone green. Um, I do have it in deco arts. I do have the actual color in deco arts. Then I also have this yellow green, which is a metallic from PBO. And I wanted to use the metallic. I thought it would be fun. So I put some, to start out with, I put some white paint on the gel plate. This is my 12 by 12 gel press gel plate. And I put some white paint on, then I put my masks down on the white paint. And then I pulled out the excess white paint using a piece of uh, scratch deli paper just to get all the white out from in, in and around the stencil. Then leaving this the masks on there, I went over them with different colors of paint. So I used the, the uh, yellow green PBO. I used some blue green PBO, which is also a metallic. I used uh, lemon yellow from Dina Wakely. And I used um, some fluorescent pink from PBO Studio Acrylics, which is their regular line. Not the, It's not a, an iridescent. It's like a regular paint. And this was my, my first play. I'm also uh, making a little tag at the same time, a background. I may or may not use that for my altered tag this month for the Pick a Stick Challenge. Remember, we have a art journal page challenge, a an altered tag challenge, and an ATC challenge each month now. So there's three different challenges. We use the same prompts. We just draw, draw them, redraw them into different amounts of steps. So the way the Pick a Stick Challenge works is you've got your two colors that you can choose to, uh, to use or not to use. You've got six steps. You need to do them in order and you can interpret them any way that you want. It doesn't have to be the interpretation that seems obvious. In fact, I appreciate it if it's not. And then, but you just need to do them in order, all six in order. And that's the only rules. You, you can just mess around with what you want to do. You can put things before, you can put things after, you can put things in between. You can do what you want. We're not trying to limit you. We're just trying to give you encouragement to do a project, to go and do it. And it, if it, having a, a prompt list helps you with that, then that's what we're all about. Um, at the beginning of the year in January, we almost stopped Pick a Stick Challenge because people weren't participating the year before. And then there was an explosion of people participating and we thought, oh, it's going to be so good this year. Guess what? It's dropped off. There's like maybe five people that did the page last month. Maybe. Maybe a few people did the tag. Maybe three. A couple people might have made an ATC. I mean, it was really low participation. And that might be because it's summer. Maybe people are busy. But... You know, it's, it, this is work for us and, you know, we're doing it for free. So if people don't do the challenges and aren't appreciating the challenges, then we won't continue doing them because it's just a silly waste of time at that point. So this time I, I decided I wanted maybe some darker 
looking ones. The other ones were kind of pale. Wasn't sure what I wanted. I'm using up the excess paint on that tag in case that's my tag background for my ultra tag. So I put down some phthalo green, uh, which is kind of a teal color paint. I put the masks on, pulled off the excess, added a little bit of yellow, pulled off that excess. And then I um, went over it with some yellow and some pink and some of that iridescent uh, um, blue green PBO, you know, just putting in some colors through this stencil, through the mask. It's really a mask, not a stencil. Then I'm going to pull all of it up using some white paint first and then some black paint because I'm going to put it on black paper. Now, why did I put that layer of white paint on there? Does anybody understand why I did that? The reason I did that is because the paints that I'm using, the bright colors that I'm using, are all quite translucent and they on the black paper they're just not going to show unless there's something behind them to you know boost them up and to make them more opaque so that's the reason that I put the layer of white on before I put the black which was the final lifting layer which coordinates with the black paper so now I have some fairly bright little fishies on a piece of black text weight paper this is lightweight paper because I'm planning on using it for collage then I went back over and um, pulled up the ghosts. I thought the, go the ghosts stayed on there. So this is what I end up ended up with was four sheets that had some fish. And so I wanted to see what I had. So I started to cut them out. I didn't want to leave them on the, the pages. I wanted to cut them out and collage them onto my into my book, which is a Strathmore 9 by 12 watercolor journal. I will link the journal and all the products that I used in the description box below. Those links uh, usually, unless it's not on Amazon, they go to Amazon and I'm an Amazon affiliate. When you use my link to buy something on Amazon, I get a few cents, which helps out my channel because I am, of course, doing this for free and I'm getting pretty burnt out. <sighs> Shh, don't tell anybody. So now for the little fish that I cut out, I thought, eh, He's not showing up very much. There's not much going on there. It's too light. So I, I put the stencil back down and I traced around with a black fine point Posca pen. Um, I traced the designs just to see how that would look. Um, yeah, it's okay. I end up using it. <laughs> so I, I decided I'm done with fish for now. I'm going to go to the next prompt. The next prompt was canvas. And I had this piece of canvas that I had used for gel printing demonstration, um, printing on fabric. Uh, I have a stack of these, which I'm sometime going to sew into something. I don't know, a bag or I don't know what I'm going to sew them into. But at this point, there was some excess canvas where there isn't any printing. And I decided to just go ahead and tear some of it into little strips and they're you know they're pretty twirly and they're they've got strings hanging off of them they're kind of cool I decided that I would add those to my page as texture and I'm making kind of some seaweed for my little fishies to swim around in so I'm using Liquitex matte gel medium this is a thick medium not that liquidy stuff to glue these down, seal them down to my page. And the page hasn't been treated yet. It's just plain watercolor paper at this point. I have put a masking around it so that there will be a white edge at the end. And I also, uh, the book is getting really fat and I couldn't really make it lay down flat by having it all folded up. So I opened up the book and I um, put a piece of deli paper taped down with some washi tape over my page from last month in case I get a little bit crazy and things get messy, which could happen at any time. <laughs> I wanted to protect the one from, from last month. So it's just covered by that deli paper. So this piece on this side is laying flat on the desk that way. Otherwise it would be puffed up on the edge and kind of tilted and not quite I don't know there's only a couple more pages left in this book and it's just like it's fat <laughs> it's just it's gonna have to have a belly band to keep it shut I'm gonna have to make a belly band and uh, de decorate the covers when I'm done filling it up 
but um, it'll be, have to be a nice tight elastic belly band because it's just it's really getting fatter and fatter. I could just pull out the last few pages and try to lighten it up a little bit, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to belly band it and call it good. So now I have some super heavy gesso and I'm going over all my canvas pieces and the whole page and then I'm adding some more texture by dragging my skewer stick through the heavy gesso and making some other thinner little wispy lines of seaweed in the background because this is a nice heavy gesso it's covering everything and allowing me to to scratch and make marks in it so that's always a fun way to make marks make texture on your page so then of course this is wet I had to dry it quite a bit then for coloration I decided to use some distress oxide sprays from Ranger uh, I think this one is salty ocean and then I used crack pistachio and fossilized amber to um, add some tonal qualities now it's turning white why is it doing that well I'll tell you why distress oxide reacts to water and when it gets water on it it turns white that's the oxidation process which is a unique property of distress oxide that, that I think that's the only ink it's a hybrid ink I think it's the only one that has that property but because I had just kind of lightly dried my gesso underneath and all that you know I had all that matte medium and the gesso and everything underneath it was still wet I mean it felt dry on the top but it's just the top surface that was dry and so um, the wetness from the gesso oxidized the distress oxide and I was okay with that I went back in I splattered it some more I sprayed it a little bit more and um, then I splattered some water on it and lifted it up to make it kind of look like watery bubbles and I thought it was fine I I could have waited overnight to finish the page and let everything get a good dry on it but I just don't have patience for that you know I don't <laughs> I just want to get it done get the video edited get it uploaded so the next step step number three is smear and man that one that one could be fun you could have a lot of fun with that one but what I ended up doing was taking some of that green gold um, deco art media fluid paint and taking my finger and smearing it onto the canvas to, to color the little seaweeds. And then I also used some of that PBO iridescent yellow green paint as well and smeared it onto the canvas and a little bit around the page um, just to blend it all in and to make some colorization. And I was pretty happy with that. Gave it another dry. And then the next step Number four was composed. Now, I talk a lot about composition on my channel, um, having a pleasing to the eye composition. There's some little weird roles that you can follow, but really what composed means to me is that the page, the, the way the things were laid out on the page is pleasing. So I decided uh, to cut out some of my other fish and figure out um, composition wise, how do I want them placed on the page? Which ones do I want? And I ended up using the ones that had that I very first printed, two of them, which um, they have some crusty bits on them. So they're not, the reason I didn't like them at first was because I got some red and some weird colors from paint that was left on the plate before, which I generally enjoy, but it was kind of bothering me. So I didn't like them, but then I ended up using two of them and that was the ones that had the white paint underneath the masks and then I used one of the more ghosty ones that I had printed the big fish is the ghosty one and then the other two are ones that were printed with the white paint underneath to start out with in white paper that's what I decided in the end for my composition that that's what I thought looked best is this my best page ever? No. Is it my worst page ever? Definitely not. <laughs> so it, it turned out pretty good. It's not my favorite, but it's it's cool. So then the next step on the list, number five, is staple. Now people would think when you see staple 
that you get out a stapler and you staple something, right? Most of us probably have some sort of a staple machine, tool, whatever you want to call it. In our studio, I have a tiny attacher, which is a stapler. I have a regular size stapler that has colored staples in it. And that would be your first go-to. But another way to use the word staple is to make it be something that you always have. Like in your kitchen, you always have your staples of milk, bread, eggs, flour. Those are the staples in your kitchen, right? Well, the staple in my studio and something that I use on probably almost every single project that I ever do on this channel is Posca pins. Ever since I found them, I'm just, I just love them. They work so well for me. Um, I, I just always use them. So I decided that my staple in this case was going to be my staple of using Posca pins. So I got out the black and white to start out with and I'm making some illustration lines, trying to bring out some of the features of the these interesting little fish masks because they are pretty cool. They've got sunshines on them, spirals on them, which are both shapes that really attract me. I really like spirals and I really like sunshines. Sunshines probably because I live in Arizona where it's I see that image all the time and I feel that image all the time, especially right now, it's super hot. Um, so that's what I wanted to do with the Posca pin staple. And then in between that, I got distracted and I decided uh, another staple of something that I very often do on, on my collages is to make shadows around my glued on pieces because it makes them look more part of the composition. So we had composed, we had, you know, staple. So I have some new distress crayons that Peg sent me. And I decided to use a blue, I think it's Lapisse uh, Distress Crayon. Um, there's, some, there's some tricks with working with this particular project. When I was gluing on, because the Distress Spray, the Distress, distress Oxide Spray reacts to water, I, I was careful when I was gluing on my fish. Um, I put the Liquitex Matte Medium on the back and then I pressed them very gently on. I didn't, you know, go over them with the brush and press them down and all that because that would have smeared up that distress oxide and made it look weird. So likewise, I'm not going to probably use something for shadows that has to do with water. So I didn't want to use my black Stabilo because I would blend it with water and that would mess up the distress oxide. I didn't want to use my um, Fabricastel pit pins because they're wet India ink and it would do something weird. So I decided that the Distress Crayons worked really great and I just blended them with my finger and a little bit with a kind of almost dry baby wipe that I had on my table. And then I went back in with more Posca pins. I got out the, the bright yellow and the bright pink just to add a little bit more oomph um, and the white to draw some fishy breathing bubbles into the water. So that that was pretty much those steps. I hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to turn on your notification bell so that you know there's a new fresh video coming out when it comes out, which is pretty much every other day, if not every third day. So the, the final step on this one is number six, dip. And I decided I would get a dip pin out to write some words. And I have a quote that is attributed to Albert Einstein. I don't know if he really said that. I mean, who really knows? But it's a great quote um, about how you think about yourself and how other people think about you. It says, everybody is a genius. But if you judge a fish by his ability to climb a tree, then he's going to think he's stupid for the rest of his life. And that is absolutely true. How we perceive ourselves and our abilities can really affect our abilities. If we think we suck at drawing, we can't draw. If we think that we can't do something for whatever reason, whether someone else projected that on us or our own projection on ourselves can really affect 
how we do things. So I think that's a great quote. I've always thought it was great, and I had fish on here, so I decided it was good. So I wrote it on there with the dip pin. I had a lot of trouble doing this because of the distress oxide. It has a thick, weird texture, and so the dip pin was just scratching it, and I had to keep dipping it. But I persisted, and I got the whole very long quote on there. <laughs> so that is it for me for the pick a stick challenge for august 2019 the tag and the atc will come up sometime in the month and also down below is peg robinson's link so that you can see what she did with the same prompts that's it for me thanks bye bye